So let's go to a demonstration at this point and I'll teach you how to make milk kefir to start with. So we get our packet of milk kefir grains. It comes as a five gram pack. We open it up and that's your milk kefir. And this is how easy it is to make kefir. It is such a simple product. You really, you really wouldn't need to buy any more probiotic pills again. Probiotic pills are very expensive. And once you get this, you can just make your own probiotics every day. Only once. Only once. Just once, and this grain will then just multiply. Mm -hmm. it just keeps growing and growing. Milk kefir grows around 10%, I'd say a week. You might find higher growth rates once it gets really happy in your environment. Because it does take time for the grain to adjust to your environment. And the beauty is that no one can produce your kefir because it becomes part of your family. It adjusts to your environment and everybody's environment is a little bit different. So your taste and your culture, your baby is yours. It cannot be replicated. You have your own unique product just for you. It's tailored to you. Get the best milk you can afford. I, I really recommend doing a biodynamic milk. This is what we use. And it's you know free of pesticides and any chemicals. It's because it's good for the culture. You don't want to damage the culture, but it's also good for you. You're not going to be damaging your biome. A2 is another good source. It's a very soft, easy to use. This is actually A2 as well. It's Jersey milk, primarily Jersey cows. This is un unhomogenized. That's an excellent point that unhomogenized the kefir tends to like creaminess. So you can even add some cream to your, your kefir as well. It produces a nice thick product and for some reason it helps with grain growth as well. We have alternates. So with the same milk kefir grain, you can use coconut milk. But the, the disclaimer is that the grains won't grow in coconut milk. They need lactose to grow. But what you can do is you can alternate. You can make a batch of milk kefir, a batch of coconut milk kefir, back to milk and just alternate. Yeah. It'll, have, it'll have a different composition, yeah. a different mix because you're giving it different sugars to yeah. feed off. Yeah. But the probiotic content, because it's the same species that are there, there'll just be some will dominate more than others because of the food source that you give it. A nice product. Yeah. And the important thing is when you're happy with your product, try not to change anything. Try not to change milk brands, keep consistent because by changing little things affects the flavor, the texture, mm -hmm. and then you know, even the, the, the creaminess. So just be mindful of that. You could, you could use oats milk, you could use soy milk, you could use nut milks. The important thing is the milks that you choose, these nut milks, make sure it's not processed. Read the label, make sure there's no chemicals, no carrageenan no stabilizers, it's a pure product. You can make your own nut milk if you choose. It's even better using activated nuts. That's the, the Rolls Royce. That's the best you can do for your body. Yes, absolutely. When you're lactose intolerant, you're lacking an enzyme called lactase. And basically the bacteria are breaking down the lactose for you. So many people are successful with milk kefir because the work is done by the organism. I'm, lact I'm lactose intolerant and I drink a lot of kefir. Yeah. I don't have an issue. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So this is how easy it is. You filter the first line. And we have another option. And it's purely optional, not necessary. This on its own is, is perfectly fine to make kefir. But what you could do is we have a specially formulated premix that you could use as well. And this is a, a blend of whey powder, colostrum, and inulin, which is a prebiotic fiber. And this is based on some research out of Italy to boost the, the enha enhance the kefir and the probiotics in there, and also the immune, immune factors that are involved in kefir. This is purely optional and your choice. You can do your research on GCMAF yourself. And that's what this boosts. 
as well. So just a tablespoon of this stuff in there. Quick stir. And now you've got some options. The lid has this, this air seal on the top. My recommendation, I always like to keep it sealed because I think this boosts the lactobacilli, which is the primary probiotics in, in this product. If you're making it for children, leave it slightly open. The reason why I say that is there is a small amount of alcohol that's produced in the product. It doesn't really matter, but it's a liability issue for us. So we have to, for us, because we have to give you guys the options to make sure you keep the, the actual alcohol content as low as possible, to keep children safe, to keep pregnant mothers safe, so it's our duty of care to you guys to make sure we give you the information yep. to do it properly. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking very tiny levels yeah, of yeah, alcohol. Yeah, this know. stuff is so potent, you know? A teaspoon or a tablespoon goes a long way. You're talking billions of bacteria. So there's a lot of good probiotics. And then the next step is you leave this now for 24 hours. Now, depending on the time of year, you might be ready in 12 hours. So in summertime, It'll be very quick. And here's something I've produced. So you can pass this around. This is, this is over-fermented kefir. This has been around for a while. But you'll notice that, I, I reckon maybe about three, three days. That's around three days. That's okay. Guys, this is a good question about things that can actually negate the probiotic benefits. I think there's not many, many things that can. You know what I mean? Any, any heat is going to be the main thing that's going to damage your probiotics. Honey is a good option. Honey is a good option. It's good, good quality honey, like raw honey, manuka, is a good option, but not in the first ferment. He, hear that, guys? Not, not in the first ferment. The reason why is because you want to keep the first ferment relatively basic to protect your grains. You don't want to add too many variables in there. But what you could do in the second ferment is you could put that kefir, the strained kefir, after you strain it through, into a little bottle. I like these wide mouth bottles, they're easy to use. Put the kefir in there once it's strained out, the grains are out. And then what you do is you put fruits, you can put honey, and you can second ferment and make it more appealing. Yeah. Lemon peel, there's people in our VIP, in our um, gut health gurus, VIP group that actually put Lemon, lemon peel, orange peel, things like that, very beneficial. Oh. With, with probiotics, this is another good question about mixing things with your probiotic. From, from my, my point of view, from a scientific point of view, I think mixing is a good thing. I think mixing with other food mediums, using it in your everyday diet with other foods will help carry the probiotics and protect it. Mixing, from, from the research that I've seen. Again, there's not going to be a huge amount of difference, but just yeah. these subtle differences yeah. may help. Start very slowly because you might experience what we call a Herxheimer or a die-off reaction. If your gut's in dysbiosis, meaning that you've got the wrong type of bacteria in the gut, by adding so much probiotics and killing these bacteria or yeast can result in a die-off reaction where we get a lot of these dead cells that trigger you know, toxicity response in the body. So start very slowly, if you're, most of you guys are beginners, start with a tablespoon, monitor for the first few days, look out for rashes, you know, loose bowels, anything like that that upsets bloating, anything that upsets your tummy, and then gradually increase the dose up to around 250 mils a day, which is perfectly fine. I have it every day, yep. I'll also use it in my cooking, and a lot of people in our Nourish Me community as well use it in their cooking. They make they make scones, they make pancakes, they make sauces and dressings. And when you join our community, you can get onto the Gut Health Gurus group. There's almost 4,000 people in there. Wonderful community across Australia that will share their knowledge, will share their recipes and, and help you guys, especially beginning, will hold your hand. 
know, with Nourishment Organics, we are all about our community and supporting you. Yep. And that's what makes me get up every day to support and help people. Yes. Cooking kills the probiotics. Yeah. But if you've got a lot of kefir and you're getting probiotics from the raw one, yeah. using kefir in the cooking actually makes the, the flour or makes the nuts that you're using it more bioavailable. Mm -hmm. It actually breaks it down for you. And it also produces some beneficial metabolites in there that are not damaged by the heat. So if you're getting lots of probiotics from the kefir anyway, mm -hmm. but then you've got all this kefir, what am I gonna do with it? Yep. Use it in your cooking because there is benefits from it as well. Yes. Can I get a quick volunteer to help me with this, please? Do I pick someone? Oh, you do? You're very brave. <laughs> <laughs> They stand this way, so then our live people can see you. We've got a Facebook Live game there as well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now I tell you, I, I totally forgot. <laughs> so this is what it looks like. So you can notice this is quite a, a thick kefir. There's a lot of grains in here. And the more grains that are in your mix, the faster it's going to ferment. And thanks, thanks very much for that. That's brilliant. I got gotcha. you. Appreciate that. <laughs> and especially when you have it sealed, it actually produces what we call kefir rand, which is like a polysaccharide that thickens it and holds it all together. And you'll notice when you touch your grains, it has like this gummy, sticky like texture. And that's a good sign. That's a good thing. That's kefir rand. It has a lot of benefits as well. But it does help to hold the kefir together. So I'll show you this, guys. So I like to use my fingers. You can use a, a wooden spoon. Stainless steel. Stainless. Stainless steel is fine. Beautiful. Wow. So that's so your kefir. So you're going to keep that aside and that's what you drink. You drink the stuff that you strained mm. and this just goes into a fresh batch of kefir. Wow. There you nice. go. It's Facebook Live. <laughs> so what it does is the strainer is actually built into the lid. Mm. And one side is for milk kefir, and the other side is for water kefir. Oh. Water kefir is a bigger mm. grain. Oh, okay. Do I see that? So you just dip it and pour it. So it's really easy. If you're like in a rush in the morning, you're off to work, you want to quickly have a, a tot of probiotics. You, know, you leave that 24 hours or less, even less, and just pour it in you know, a little shot of it. Off you go to work, and then eventually all of that's going to run out. Yeah. And you're going to have grains in the bottom, and then you just top up with milk, premix if you choose, start again. How, how long can you leave it in that one? Because we're just thinking if you don't go through it very quickly, like mm -hmm. start when you're just having like a tablespoon and stuff. Mm -hmm. How long can it kind of stay? Two weeks. Oh, so you can, you can, can change in the milk. Yes. So you just put, it gets stronger and stronger. It gets stronger in flavour. Absolutely. Yeah. It gets it's producing lactic acid. Lactose is turning into lactic acid, it's getting sour and sour. Yeah. And then eventually this will split. And so cool. it just stays yeah. out in the pantry in a dark place. You don't have to put it in the fridge after the 24 hours. Right? Exactly. Yeah. But the longer you leave it out on the bench, mm. the more stronger it'll become. Mm. And it'll get more sour. So you've got, to, you, you've got to think of this as in, I can only provide a guideline, but yeah. the best way is to start making it for yourself yeah. and taste it and get a feel for what taste you like. And then you put it in the fridge to stop. And then down. you put it in the fridge mm. to just shut it off okay. and it'll just stop and, it'll just stop. and slow down. Does that make sense? Yeah.